Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A couple days ago, I did a video demonstrating how to create the Orton effect in Lightroom, but I had mentioned it's kind of a faux Orton effect. It's not uh, a real true Orton effect. And I also mentioned that I demonstrate how to do it in Photoshop, and that's what we're going to be doing today. If you haven't seen that Lightroom video and want to watch it, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Now, like everything in Photoshop, there's several different ways to create an Orton effect. I'm going to show you what I think is my favorite way to create the Orton effect. Even Michael Orton himself didn't do it the same way all the time. He did various different methods to create this kind of ethereal glow. And we'll start out with the same uh, portrait that I did in that Lightroom video. Now the first step in Photoshop for the way I'm going to use or do the Orton effect is I'm going to duplicate the background layer twice. Hit Command J on my Mac twice. It would be Control J on a PC. I am going to turn off the top layer and click on the middle layer. Now what I like to do is create a smart object. This is optional, but you'll see why I like to do this in a moment. So I'm going to just right click right on that layer and go down to convert to smart object. And it takes a second now, you'll see that little square in the corner, it is now a smart object. Now what we need to do is apply some blur to this. So we're gonna go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And it really, it's kinda of hard for me to say what the number should be, it's kinda of dependent on uh, the resolution of the image to begin with, the higher resolution image, you would use a higher amount of pixels, a lower resolution, a lower amount. But because I made this a smart object, I'll be able to go back in and readjust this if I want to. So I could use a ridiculous amount of blur, like, you know, 53.1, and I'll click OK. All right, so we have this really blurred image, but you could see it's a smart object, so I could just double click on the words Gaussian Blur and come in and readjust it if I want to. But I don't want to. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change the blend mode of this layer, layer one, to screen. So we'll go to screen, and you could see there's that kind of ethereal glow. And this is pretty much what you'd get in Lightroom. The difference in Photoshop and what Michael Orton did, a lot of times on his images, the darker part of, parts of the image had um, a lot of sharpness to them. And that is kind of difficult to do in Lightroom, if not impossible, and we're not at that point here yet in Photoshop. That is where this top layer comes in. So we're gonna turn that on, and of course when I turn that on, it just covers up the layer below. And again, we're going to make this a smart object. I'm going to right click on it and we're going to go down to convert to smart object. Now, now for this, we're going to add that sharpening. So we're gonna go up to filter, other, high pass. And you can see it turns the image gray and you have this radius. And again, it's difficult for me to tell you what the radius should be. It really depends on the image, on you know, the fine detail your image might have, how high you would place this. Um, but because again, I made it a smart object, I could come back in and readjust it. So I'll use something kind of high, like 9.3, and we'll click OK. So again, you could see the words high pass. If I want to readjust it, just double click on that and I can. But it looks like this. What do we do? Well, we just change the blend mode of this. We'll go to the drop down and we'll go to soft light. Now there is the full Orton effect uh, in you know doing it this way. Now I'll turn off that top layer and you could look at the sharpness in her hair and her eyelashes. These are the darker parts of the image. There's without that top layer and there's with the top layer, without, with. So you could see how kind of brings back that little sharpness, but you still have that kind of ethereal glow that I keep talking about. Now again, I could come back in and readjust the, let's say Gaussian blur layer, and I could turn that way up if I want, make it higher, whatever. I could come in then and readjust those because they're smart layers. 
Now, in the Lightroom video, I demonstrated it on a landscape image. And Michael Orton, of course, was a landscape photographer. And this is where he most often applied this um, effect too. So uh, we'll do it on this image. This is a different image than I used in that Lightroom video because quite frankly, that image in the Lightroom video kind of stunk. I think this image is a little better. So like before, um, you know what? Two, um, I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I received an email. Someone asked me, how do you create an action in Photoshop? Well, you could create an action when you do this. So to do that, we'll go up to this little like um, play button up here and we're gonna click plus. So we're gonna create a new action and we're gonna call this the um, Orton effect. Okay, and we'll click record. Now everything I do from this point forward will be recorded. And we're gonna duplicate the background layer twice. I'm gonna hit command J twice, just like I did before, control J on a PC, turn off the top layer, click on the middle layer, turn it into a smart object, right click on it, go down to convert to smart object, once that happens, if it ever happens, then we're going to go up and add that Gaussian blur to it. So we'll go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And again, we'll just leave some ridiculously high number like 100.1 pixels and we'll click OK. Now we'll change the blend mode of this to screen. There's our ethereal glow. There's before. And there's after. Now we'll go turn on that top layer, click on the top layer, make this a smart object by right clicking on it, and then going on to convert to smart object. And it's taking a little longer to create a smart object now. And now we'll go up to filter, other, high pass filter. And we'll add, I don't know, let's say 12 pixels, like I said, because we have those smart objects, we don't have to worry about the exact number. We could come back in and readjust it. And from the drop down, we'll change this to soft light. Now there is the whole Orton effect. Now I'm done with my new created action. So I'm going to hit stop. So I stop my recording. So uh, as we take a look at it, I'll turn off the sharpness layer. There's before sharpening after sharpening. Uh, here's an entire before after. I'll hold in the option cam on my Mac and click on this bottom eyeball. There's the original image and there's with our Orton effects done to it. Now, just to demonstrate how to use the action, I'll take these top two layers and throw them in the garbage. So we're right back where we started. So if you want to play this action, um, I called it the Orton effect right here. Just click on it and click play and then it will do its thing. It may take a little while because remember those smart objects seem to take quite a while to run, but we'll let it do its thing and we'll see what we come up with. And there it is, it finished. And there is our Orton effect. So we now have that option to use the action instead of manually going through anything. And even if you use the action, you still could come back in and readjust things. So if I wanna go into Gaussian Blur and readjust that, I could, you know, turn it way up, turn it way down. I turn it way up, it seems to get kind of a glow down in here. Like that. No, no, that's getting ridiculous. But for demonstration purposes, I think that gives you an idea of what you could do uh, with an Orton effect in Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>